Hey there, Happy New Year and welcome back to XCOM. My name is Pete and to start off the new year, today we complete the second to last episode in our XCOM Enemy Within Iron Man Impossible walkthrough. We really don't have that much left to do in the game, so our task today is to simply shoot down as many UFOs as possible and I am prepared to tackle two, maybe even three terror missions in one video if it has to come to that, but let's see how things go. We also don't really have to prepare anything to start off today, so let's begin by scanning and see what comes up. Right, the first UFO of the episode is a landed abductor, but as always we will ignore it and wait for the battleship, which we can then actually shoot down. Yeah, yeah, we have heard that a few times before. Let's launch our Fusion Lance Firestorm and shoot down UFO number 34 of this playthrough. Alright, there we go, a good start and the crash site will of course not be cleared, so let's keep going and see what else we can find. Commander, we just received a priority one request from the council. Okay, up next we have a council mission waiting for us, but just like land UFOs, those are missions that we can ignore. This will result in a bit of a panic penalty, but overall nothing that we need to worry about just yet. A request for six plasma rifles will then swiftly be ignored, and soon after, the first important mission of the episode finally appears. As you can see, skipping the council mission has resulted in a moderate panic increase across Asia, but if we successfully complete this next terror mission here, then those numbers should go down again. So let's jump in, same squad as last time. I'm still hoping to give Shoji some psionic experience and not only face sector part after sector part. Solid copy, Big Sky. Strike One has been given the green light. Your highest priority is to protect those civilians. Right, here we are, another fairly linear highway map, and I think we have played on this one before. At this point in the game, some repetition is pretty much unavoidable, I'd say. And we start things off as usual with a scouting dash and a rescue. What we then encounter is unfortunately nothing surprising. Two sector parts are waiting, they have not detected us yet and will keep it that way. The rest of our squad can move up a bit or go airborne, as we activate overwatches and wait for the aliens to make their move. Now, unfortunately, the group in the back is the one that triggers reaction fire first. I had hoped for that to be the other way around, but as you can see, we're getting some good results. Enemy target eliminated. Group number two then looks a little indecisive for a few moments, but eventually activates as well, and that triggers another barrage of overwatches from our two heavies. And there we go, all four drones have been eliminated. That is certainly a good start, even though the sector parts themselves both remain unharmed. Taking out two in one turn might be a bit tricky, so let's disable the one on the right. Which also results in Andrea here only coming under reaction fire once. Taking fire over here. The shot then misses, which is good, and now Luisa can move freely. First, up to the wall here to rescue two more civilians. Get to the ship and, keep your head down. and then, using run and gun to go over to the left side of the sector part. There now. Before she fires though, we will launch a shredder rocket with Kim Lupai, which will now only kill one civilian instead of three. At this point, the two sector parts are now weakened and Sharky Santoso can take two shots, although I doubt that will be enough for the kill. And indeed it isn't, but Rosilius here should be able to finish the job. That is one enemy down and double tap gives him another shot, so let's use that to go for the headshot against enemy number two. 
That brings the sector part down to 9 hit points, and up next we're moving up with Shoji. His hit chance isn't great, but at least he will activate holo targeting. And despite the miss, we now have a slightly improved hit chance with Mech Trooper Astro Cook, so let's take the shots to end a rather complicated first turn. Now the sector part barely survives with only two hit points, but it really doesn't have that many options here. Unfortunately though, it appears as if it has more friends around, as a third sector part appears a little further in the back, and also immediately activates since none of our soldiers are currently cloaked. Now, we'll take care of it in just a moment. First of all, we can land the killing blow on the other one, a job that goes to our in-the-zone sniper Michelle Talpas. She connects and can now start going to work on the drones, which she can kill both and then even go on overwatch afterwards. Our third sector pod, meanwhile, is out of sight but active, so I think it's best if we let it come to us. And I would say Andrea is the perfect bait for that. She could certainly take a hit, while everyone else goes into stealth mode and Roselius goes on overwatch. As expected, our enemy then comes around the corner and we have three reaction shots ready to go. Our snipers unsurprisingly connect with theirs, and Miss Cook also finds a target, already eliminating half of our enemy's health pool. However, as expected, Andrea becomes a target herself just a few moments later, and unlike its fallen companion, this sector part here appears to be a bit more accurate. And not only that, but we also catch a glimpse of a fourth sector part on the map, so it looks like it is once again going to be one of those missions. Fortunately enough though, that one does not detect our squad just yet, so we can focus on eliminating the third one first, starting with a double tap from Mr. Wargal. That leaves it with 6 hit points, so a regular sniper shot from Palladium Talpus will likely not cut it. The headshot, however, gets us the critical, and with that, the kill. Now, before we move on, let's administer some healing. Both Andrea and Luisa can use it. And then we continue scouting and rescuing. This then reveals the location of sector pod number 4, so we will have to approach with our two heavies in ghost mode to remain undetected. Leave this area. On the alien turn, our enemies then actually move back a bit, but that's okay. They are still in rocket range, and that is what we'll open up our next turn with. Now we do have another disabling shot ready to go, so there is no need to go for the kill here. Instead, we can stealth up with Shoji to get him into a better striking position. And that reveals, surprise surprise, sector part number 5 of this mission. I think I've actually never had that happen before. So far, 3 or 4 sector parts were unfortunately the standard on most terror missions. 5, however, that is a whole new level. But we are actually in a not so bad spot here so I think we should be able to manage somehow. The guaranteed disabling shot is then our only logical option. Afterwards, the threat is neutralized, at least for the time being, so let's move up our remaining soldiers. Luckily, the other sector part's line of sight is largely blocked, so we can keep it from activating and making things harder. The alien turn then uneventfully passes by, so we are now up again, and very importantly, an excellent mission rating is still very much a realistic target. Now, first of all, let's take a free shot with Luisa here. With a 99% hit chance, I would be very surprised if she misses. We even get the critical, which is lovely, and now it's time to activate sector part number 5, as Astra Cook will move up a few tiles and reveal herself. Now, the next move with her would be to go for the Electropulse, but as you can see, that would currently kill two civilians and also injure Luisa, so let's get those out of the fray as best as we can. With Sharky Santoso, we can even get ourselves another kill along the way, as moving up onto the rooftop here not only keeps us safe from sector part reaction fire, but also brings her face to face with one of its drones. 
Up next, we can then use the last charge of CFD Lupi's ghost armor to rescue one more civilian, and that means Andreas Electropulse will now only kill one more, which is just enough so that we can still afford it. With the sector pod inside of the bus deactivated, we can now also safely move up with Shoji, who can start cleaning up by taking out the last drone on the map. Speaking of cleanup, a headshot from Resilius should then also be enough to take out sector pod number 4, and indeed, the critical hit gives Mr. Wargal yet another kill. While Palladium Talpus then reloads to end our turn, we can also see that it was a good idea to keep some distance from the car with Kim here. Despite the explosion, she now remains unharmed, and we can now go in for the kill. First of all, we'll launch a volley with Shoji, just to activate holo targeting. This then boosts CFD Lupi's hit chance to 62%, which is respectable enough, I'd say, to take two shots. One misses, the other one hits, and now it's Andrea's turn. If she doesn't move, she can also fire twice, so let's see where that gets us. And there we are, the sector part is down to three hit points, and that means Sharky Sentoso can now move in for the kill, and that's the mission. Okay, so that was certainly something. Let's just hope that the game will not be as generous with the enemies for whatever mission comes next, because on a different, slightly more open map, things could have gone much, much worse. Our troops are making it look easy out there. Let's hope they don't get too cocky. Back in the base, we then have nothing to report, no injuries and no interesting loot, but at least a sizable panic decrease. We will be in touch, Commander. And with that, I would say we are ready to keep scanning. After all, we still need to shoot down six more UFOs, so let's get to it. Contact detected. And our next UFO is once again a landed one, so let's ignore it and wait for the battleship. We're putting our entire satellite network at risk. And there we go, the battleship is here, so let's send out our firestorm and go for UFO takedown number 35. This was a close one, and I actually pressed the dodge module there in the last second. The fight was over before it could trigger, though, so we get a bit lucky and still have two of them remaining. The crash side, of course, will be left alone as usual, and that should already bring us to the next council report. Incoming transmission. You've done an admirable job in combating the alien threat over the course of this past month, Commander. However, we still believe there is room for improvement in your efforts. Remember, we will be watching. Just a sea grade this month, but at least we don't have any countries that we have to worry about panic-wise, so we can jump into November with five more alien UFOs on the list. Contact detected. And it looks like the game does not want to give us anything easy here today. Once again, the supply barge here has already landed, so takedown number 36 will have to be yet another battleship. We're going to lose coverage. A request for three UFO flight computers will then be ignored, and shortly after, as expected, the battleship appears, and you already know the drill, let's take it out. Alright, that was quick and easy, our firestorm barely sustained any damage, and the counter is up to 36 UFO takedowns. We've got an incoming transmission, Commander. Guess who? Up next, then, we are being asked to take part in another Council mission, but that is a proposal that we will have to reject, and in terms of panic, we should still be fine as well. Contact detected. Our next and likely last UFO of this month is then once again, surprise, surprise, a landed one, so there is nothing we can or rather want to do here for now. One of our top priorities is to maintain satellite coverage over the Council's member nations. Once again, then, we have a battleship appear, so let's send out our Firestorm. My apologies if things are getting a bit repetitive at this point. I promise we are rapidly approaching something a bit more exciting. They're all over us! 
Right, so this time the dodge module did trigger, which means that at this point we only have one left. Now considering that we still need to take down three more alien UFOs, that may not be enough, so let's pay a quick visit to engineering. The new engineers arrived this morning, Commander. We're always glad to have more help down here. As you can see, we do have one last dodge module in storage. The real problem, however, arises from the fact that we can also only purchase one more. To grab more than that, we would need additional floater corpses and not the heavy version. And we haven't seen those in quite some time, so we are very unlikely to obtain any more before the end of the game. Still, let's purchase what we can and then also grab two more fusion lances, because if we can't ensure that all of our firestorms survive every encounter, then we should at least make sure that we have enough firestorms to cover any potential losses. And for this order, we will actually also use the rush construction feature for the first time. This will cut the production time in half from 14 to 7 days, but also double the cost of credits, illyrium and alloys. However, looking at the respective amounts we have for all three resources, I think it's safe to say that we can more than afford that. And while we now wait for construction to finish, we can keep scanning. Unless anything unforeseen happens, another council report should be up next. Incoming transmission. You've done an admirable job in combating the alien threat over the course of this past month, Commander. However, we still believe there is room for improvement in your efforts. We will be in touch, Commander. Right, so we get another C grade this month and panic in the United States is something we should keep an eye on. In case you didn't notice though, we did get lucky with no terror mission this month, which on the other hand also contributed to the USA now having this panic level. I am pretty sure though that now in December we will have another terror mission, and as long as that takes place at the end of the month we should be fine. Now, in the meantime, we have outfitted our two new firestorms with fusion lances, and installing those only takes a single day, so here we are again and we can now transfer them to where they need it. Now, for some reason, for the past few months, that has mainly been North America, so let's put one there and then the other one to South America, and I think that is also all we need to do here. In my opinion, there is no need to order any additional ones. Keep in mind that we only have three UFO takedowns left, and that we do still have two dodge modules as well. Commander. We've got another transmission coming in from the council. And the month begins with another council mission. And unfortunately, this one does take place in North America. So by rejecting it, we will likely bring the United States to the panic limit. Still, it is early in the month and we should have no issues correcting that. Impact transfer complete. And here you can see it, panic in the US has reached critical levels. Again though, with multiple UFO takedowns and very likely another terror mission all still waiting for us, we should be able to bring that back down before the month comes to an end and we risk losing a country. UFO takedown number 38 will then finally occur on something else than a battleship. The large scout here is absolutely no threat for us and should go down in just a few hits. This also means that we should be able to finish the rest of the game without losing a firestorm. Even if the next two UFOs are both battleships, then we have dodge modules for both of them. Contact detected. And it looks like at least the next UFO will indeed be a battleship, as we will not engage the landed abductor here, and instead wait until we can finally shoot down UFO number 39. Another request, another rejection, I think it's safe to say that we have more important matters to attend to. Contact detected. And there we are, our second to last UFO takedown is just around the corner. We're getting eaten up here! Alright, that leaves us with only one more UFO to shoot down until we finally unlock the Shooting Stars achievement. That is all we have been grinding for for the last few episodes. It has not always been overly exciting, but we're nearing the end. And since we are, let's quickly head over to engineering again, as there is one more facility that we still have left to build. The new engineers arrived this morning, Commander. We're always glad to have more help down here. That is right, after 65 episodes we will now finally construct a Golub chamber. That is what we need to use the ethereal device and hopefully make contact with the aliens. And as long as we don't build this facility, we will not be able to trigger the final mission of the game. Just because we can, we will also rush construction once more. It will now only take 7 more days until the end is finally here. In the meantime though, you know the drill, let's keep scanning.
And there it is, I had already been waiting for it. Two months in a row without a Terra mission would have been a bit much to ask. I can pretty much guarantee it though, this here is going to be our last Terra mission of the entire series. So let's jump in and see what is waiting for us. Big Sky. Squad is cleared to engage hostile targets. Watch your fire out there. We have civilians on the ground. Repeat, civilians are in the AO. Right, so once again we have a map here that I think we are all familiar with. I will admit though I have completely lost track. In any case, we can start things off as usual. Let's dash forward with Louisa and see what she can find. Okay, so she encounters two nests of hostiles and neither one are sector parts. I would say that is already a fantastic start to our last Terra mission. And I think we will go for the mutons first. Tackling the floaters in the middle of the map first seems like a not so smart idea. So let's get everyone into position, activate overwatches. At this point I think you know how this goes. And there we go, despite movement from the floaters, we thankfully do not unload on them. Instead, it looks like the mutons will now suffer the full barrage. Alright, one muton down, the other two should not be that much of a problem. And we can start things off with Resilius, who takes a headshot and then a regular shot against the muton berserker. And that leaves Michelle to first go for the kill against the Berserker. Which then triggers her in the zone ability, allowing her to follow things up with a headshot of her own. And that's it, the first enemy group has already been taken out and we have plenty of moves still left. So let's use those to get a bit closer towards the floaters and activate another round of overwatches. And once again, we're getting off a good number of reaction shots here. Not all of them connect, but our enemies definitely feel the pressure. Shoji then actually lands a kill and can follow things up with a mind fray. After all, that is why he's on these missions in the first place. And today, we finally have the chance to give him a bit of psionic experience. With one floater down and the other one weakened, we can now take a free shot with Sharky Santoso. That is not quite enough to get us the kill, but once again Palladium Talpas has an easy job cleaning up. And with that we have taken care of group number two as well and can keep scouting, which to my genuine surprise reveals another group of mutons. So at most we're facing only two sector parts this mission, which is a lower number than we have faced on pretty much every Terra mission for the last 10 or so episodes. And believe it or not, enemy group number four are only chrysalids. So this mission right here is definitely a stark contrast to the first one in this episode. However, it looks like the chrysalids have not noticed us yet. Only the mutons are active, and at least the berserker has already suffered some damage. Targeting system readjusting. As a matter of fact, it has lost enough hit points so that Andrea can go for the instant kill here. One punch with the kinetic strike module and the muton is no more. For the one closest to us, we can then try our luck with Resilius, who is not guaranteed the kill, but could do enough damage for the kill. And he does indeed get the kill, which means his second shot can now go against the Muton in the back. Let's see if he gets lucky again. Alright, not this time, so it is once again up to Michelle to clean things up. 
And that removes group number three from the map and once again the chrysalids are not active yet. So let's stealth up with our two heavies, activate a few overwatches and see where that takes us. And the chrysalids are on the move, which means Sharky and Shoji are up for reaction shots. Unfortunately though, both of them missed their target, which is especially surprising with Luisa, considering that she was standing right next to the enemy. Still, I would say that things are going pretty well for us, all things considered. Yes, we now also have a zombie to take care of here, but I doubt that is going to cause us too much trouble. So to start things off, we will have Michelle drop back down to the ground and have her take out the first chrysalid. With the plasma sniper rifle, the kill is guaranteed even without the critical hit. And that means she can now use her headshot ability on the zombie, which will result in a guaranteed critical, probably enough for the kill. Now in theory, she could keep firing, but she has no more enemies to target, which means Sharky Santoso is up next with another guaranteed chrysalid kill. And the shot was free, which means she might as well try her luck with a 97%er here. And with that, we are already down to only one more group of enemies. So let's finish our turn by moving up Mech Trooper Astro Cook, and then we can activate another round of Overwatches. Nothing happens then on the alien turn apart from the loss of our third civilian, so we might as well send Luisa in that direction. Unfortunately though, that does not reveal anything. A cloaked CFD Lupi, on the other hand, is much more successful. She rescues another civilian and finds enemy group number 5. And there you have it, what would a good terror mission be without at least one sector pod? At this point though, we should not be in too much danger. So let's get ready for a few overwatches. I don't even think we necessarily need to do any damage on this turn, but it sure would make things a lot easier. As usual then, our squad targets the drones and not the sector pod. However, at least both of them are defeated that way, which now leaves only one more enemy between us and victory. And well, this should not be too difficult, so let's start things off with a shredder rocket from Kim. Following that, Resilius can take aim with a headshot. That results in a critical hit, and that means the kill will be ours in just a few seconds. Mr. Wargal's second shot deals six further points of damage, and once again, it is up to Palladium Talpas to land the killing blow. And there we go, what was very likely the last terror mission of the game has been completed. With another excellent mission rating in hand, we can now return to the base and talk about what awaits us in the next and final episode. Well done, Commander. It's always good for morale when everyone makes it home safely. So here we are, unfortunately no psionic level up for Shoji, which is not the end of the world, but certainly less than I had hoped for. Since two missions have passed since we unlocked the first one, we are also automatically awarded a second Athenian shield here, so in the next video we'll have an extra medal to put on someone. My first impulse would be to give this to Andrea for even more survivability, but if you have other ideas, then feel free to let me know. Remember. We will be watching. Now at this point we have indeed reached the calm before the storm. Only one more UFO takedown is waiting for us and afterwards we can immediately embark on the final mission. All of that will happen in the next episode which is going to be filled to the brim with achievements. A grand total of nine more of those are waiting for us. So let's hope that things go according to plan and we can unlock all of them so that we can finally fully complete this game. For today, however, we can make the cut right here. Again, I hope the video wasn't too repetitive at times, and that our two somewhat unusual terror missions made up for that. If you enjoyed the video, then of course I would be happy if you could leave a thumbs up. And if you like what I'm doing, then go ahead and subscribe if you haven't done so already, grab some merch over on shop.petecomplete.com, or check out and maybe even pledge to the Pete Complete Patreon. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.